Hello and thanks for joining me today. I'm Melody with Homeschool Happy Hour, mom of four in our blended family of six, homeschooler of two. This is our eighth year of homeschooling and today's video is going to be all about uh, the legalities associated with being a homeschooler in the state of Washington. So if you are a new homeschooler or you live in our state and you just want to revamp your legal know-how and make sure you're checking off all those boxes, then stick with me and let's check out some of those rules that we have to follow. No matter what state you live in, your number one go-to for information about homeschooling should be HSLDA. That's the Homeschool Legal Defense Association. They can provide you information on every state and tell you what laws those states have, what regulations you have to follow, how to do that, and answer all kinds of legal questions. I, of course, am not an attorney. I'm not here to give you legal advice. I am just gonna give you a brief rundown on Washington State's rules to familiarize you with the system. If you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed as a new homeschooler, don't worry, you're not alone. We've all been there, but I promise you it is so much easier than you think it's going to be. And if you just check out HSLDA as well as the WHO, not the World Health Organization, but the Washington Homeschool Organization, and they will give you specific information on our state. It is, of course, your responsibility to make sure you're following all the rules. So if I missed something today and then you didn't do it, don't go telling someone later that, well, oh, but Melody said, no, let's not do that. I'm just gonna go through step-by-step step, some of the basic legal requirements in our state. This is going to be the first video in a playlist of videos all about starting off homeschooling, some of those technicalities to start off. So if you really like this video, give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that when those other videos come up on the playlist, you will be notified and you can catch up with them. Number one piece of information that you should know is compulsory attendance. Now in the state of Washington, your child is not legally required to attend school public or otherwise, until they are eight years old. Let me repeat that. Your child is not required to attend any school until they are eight. Meaning, if your child is five or six years old and they would otherwise start kindergarten in the public school this year, and you're not sure what you wanna do yet, and you, you haven't decided whether you wanna do public school, home school, you do not have to rush you're not legally required to send them to school yet. You are also not required to follow any of the laws that I'm getting ready to go through that apply to homeschool families. So don't stress yourself out and try and follow all of these laws if you haven't even pushed that go button. If, however, your child was enrolled in kindergarten at the age of five or six, and then you chose to pull them out for homeschool, you will have to follow these laws, even if they are under the age of eight. So if you have a seven-year-old that was formerly enrolled in the public school, you push that go button when you enrolled them in school, and you do have to follow the homeschool standards from here on out, even though they're not eight years old. Different states have different requirements as far as time, uh, whether it's days, uh, hours, or nothing at all as far as how much time you have to invest in homeschool. They also have different requirements on how you have to track that and what you do with that information. In the state of Washington, a homeschooled student is required to have 180 days or 1,000 hours of instruction. Now, keep in mind that in our state, that information doesn't go anywhere. You are not required to turn that into the school. You are not required to turn that into the state, nothing. But it is something you want to keep in your records. If you're familiar with my channel, then you may have noticed that I've mentioned in the past that we are homeschooling after divorce. So when my first marriage ended, my children were five and seven, and they had already been homeschooling. And 
So after the divorce, there was a huge battle to be able to continue homeschooling. Because of that huge battle, I have been on point when it comes to all the things I'm supposed to do. And that means even though I don't have to turn in my hours or my days to the state, I have them on record just in case something pops up and I need to prove in court that yes, we are doing everything by the book. Um, I'll also mention that when I first started homeschooling, my children were enrolled in a, um, I thought a homeschool program through the public school. And so I thought we were homeschooling. That is in fact, not legally considered homeschooling. Your child is considered a public school student if they are going through a homeschool extension program. You don't have to worry about these rules or do any of this stuff I'm getting ready to go through with you if your child is enrolled through a public school in a homeschool extension program because legally that is not homeschool. When I say homeschool, I am talking specifically about parent-led and directed home education that is not through the public school or another private school. Let's get back on track here. There are multiple subjects that you are required to teach as a homeschooling family. Those include occupational education, science, math, language, which is both foreign language and English language arts, social studies, history, health, reading, writing, spelling, and the development of an appreciation of art and music. Note that last one, it does not say they have to take an art or music class or any specific curriculum or standard, they just have to develop an appreciation for it. It's very loosely written, and if you look at Washington state laws, it's actually intended to be that way because they're trying to give parents the freedom to homeschool how they see fit without having to be tied down in very specific parameters. That's our compulsory attendance age. We've got the hours that they're required to cover. We've got the subjects you're required to cover. The difference between public schooled homeschooler and actual homeschooler. Now, if you are in that actual homeschooler category, then there are four ways that you can qualify in order to homeschool your child. No matter what, no matter which direction you take, you do have to fill out an intent to homeschool form and file it with your local school district by September 15th or two weeks from the start of school. Now these forms are very simple. I have a sample one right here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. I blacked out the information for our school specifically, but it basically just gives you, uh, you fill out your children's name. You only need one form for your entire family because it has a space for multiple children. Birth date, grade of course is subjective. For this purpose, if you don't have a particular grade for your child, I would just go by what their standard grade would be by age in the public school. And then your um, parent and guardian signature, street address, all that kind of stuff. And then this will be signed by the superintendent of your local school district and they should return it to you. If you're looking to get one of these forms, simply stop by the school or email the school and they will send one to you. This form is for your records, so you do need to have a signed copy in your records. There's a couple things to know about this form though. Number one, some schools, the forms will look different. This is just a sample form, but some schools will have a little box on here and it says the home-based instruction will be supervised by a person certified in Washington State, blah, 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 and the instructor's name. That's not a required section of the form. Um, I had a mom contact me in there and she was very upset thinking the school was saying she had to have an instructor supervisor. She does not necessarily have to do that. That is one of the four ways to qualify to be a homeschooler in Washington State. You can get a certified teacher that is willing to supervise your homeschool. And if you do that, you're going to have to talk to that teacher about how often they're going to look at your materials 
and what steps you're gonna take to track that to make sure you have a record of them supervising. But there are three other ways in order to homeschool that do not require you to be supervised by anybody. And so if you're not actually having a teacher supervise you, just skip that box if the school has it um, and don't worry about it. The school cannot deny you this form. They cannot decline to sign this form. You are not asking the school's permission to homeschool. They have no say in whether or not you homeschool. You are simply doing your part, filing what you need to file so that you have all your records straight. Some schools will give you a hard time about it. Stick to your guns. Just be clear, kind, respectful, and if you need to, visit um, the Washington Homeschool Organization. They can help you with those kind of situations, as well as HSLDA. Both of those programs will help you if you're having legal trouble working with your local school district. But once this form is signed, you do not have any other obligation to the local school district. They don't have any say in your homeschool. So don't let them make you think otherwise. The second way that you can homeschool legally, the first being under a uh, certified teacher, the supervision of a certified teacher. The second way is if you have enough college credit hours. If you have 45 quarter credit hours, pay attention to that 45 quarter credit hours, or the equivalent in semester hours, which is about 30 semester credits, depending, um, then you're qualified to homeschool. You don't need to do anything further. So essentially, if you have an AA degree, you probably have enough college credit hours to homeschool without having to worry about any further steps. You're good to go. That's the easiest way to do it. However, you don't have to have a college degree to homeschool. You don't even have to have a high school diploma to homeschool legally. Your other options are um, you can take a homeschooling course. You will find that those are readily available throughout the year. It's usually a couple days, a weekend course. You do have to pay for the course, but it is not very expensive. I think I took the course and it was $25 for the weekend course, and it was very useful. Now, because of my previous legal challenges after my divorce and how hard I had to fight in order to be able to continue to homeschool. Like I said, I made sure that I did everything I possibly could do to make sure there was nothing questionable. So I have enough college credit hours, so I don't really have to do anything else. But I did also take that homeschooling course and I found it fairly useful. There was a lot of information in there that I did already know because I'd already been homeschooling for a number of years, but it was nice to touch up on that information. It was also nice to have an opportunity to meet other homeschool families in the area. So if you have a chance to take one of those courses, I'd say just go ahead and do it and cross it off your list. The last way, number four, that you can qualify to homeschool in our state is to get a letter from the superintendent from your local district stating that they feel you're qualified to homeschool. Uh, surprise, surprise, I got one of those too. So I have a letter from the superintendent saying that I am qualified to homeschool and should be allowed to homeschool my kids. I have the college credit hours and I took the course. The one that I did not do was be supervised by a teacher because I really didn't want to do that. So like I said earlier, I did start off with uh, being through a homeschool extension program and I slowly backed out of that program until I got to where I am at today where I homeschool entirely independent of the school district. I do have the option in this state to take advantage of activities in the school. Any homeschool student can enroll part-time in the public school. If you're enrolled part-time in public school there's all kinds of services that your student has access to. So if you choose to do that, I would suggest looking into it. If you have a child that has um, a need for speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, any of that kind of stuff, then if you enroll part-time in this public school, which could mean something as simple as going to art class or a PE class, your child can then access 
any ancillary service through the school district, which are things like OTPT, um, speech therapy, any other co-curricular activity. And a homeschool student does not have to be enrolled in anything part-time or otherwise in order to participate in extracurricular activities. So the bookworm this year is participating in softball at our local junior high. It was super easy. I just call the school. They have me fill out the regular sports registration forms. And on those forms, there's a little box that says I'm a homeschooled student. There are requirements for immunization records. If your child goes to public school, as a homeschool family, you don't need to prove that you have your child immunized or have immunization exemption forms or anything like that, but it is a good idea to have those on file so that if they do pop up in the year, then you have them ready to go, particularly if you choose an exemption form. So things to have on file would include your home-based instruction form that you send out to the school, you wanna have that on file. You want your child's immunization or immunization exemption forms on file. I would keep a printed version of the HSLDA legal requirements. It's one page front and back. You can print it for free off of their website. And it is great to have on hand whenever questions pop up or if anything pops up or even just for your own reference. It's really good to have on hand. As far as record keeping, Washington State does not require you to turn in any records aside from that intent to homeschool form. If you have legal challenges like I had, it is a good idea to keep records on file. But even if you don't, it's really nice to have your records on file for um, what you've done throughout the years with your children for homeschooling. Now, I am not a keeper of things is what I tend to call myself. I'm, I'm constantly getting rid of stuff. I don't like to have my space cluttered. I just don't keep things if I don't have to keep them. So I do have like a box of homeschool things that my children have done over the years. That's one just regular, I think it's a, like a box for printer paper or something with their stuff in it. But that's it. And that's seven years of homeschooling worth of stuff. I, I just don't keep the stuff for very long. But what I do keep are my planners. That is my record keeping. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I will have another video that will be included in this playlist all about record keeping and using your planner to record keep. But it's very simple just to keep that planner so you can look back and see what you covered. And really it's just um, kind of an emergency measure in case something ever does pop up. Now, with where we're at politically in our state, I strongly encourage all homeschoolers to have their ducks in a row. The schools are having a hard time right now with how many people are pulling their kids out of public school in order to homeschool. Now, regardless of where you fall on the political spectrum, I think if you want to be a homeschooler, whether you agree or disagree with what our state is doing politically, you should be aware that at a certain point, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, um, it's very likely that the government will step in and try and prevent um, the mass exodus from public schools that has been happening. Because when public schools lose students, they lose funding. And that is the last thing they want to do. And I don't want the public schools to lose funding either, but at the same time, I still encourage everyone to homeschool their kids if they're able, because I think it's a superior education in general. And with COVID, I feel like it's just a better it's just better for everyone. Um, but of course, that's just my opinion. If the government decides to step in like they have been doing throughout the last couple years, then you're going to want all of your stuff organized. So give yourself a file cabinet, a box or something and make sure you have all of the things that you need in order to be legally a-okay. You don't want anyone to be able to question your right to homeschool. This is important too, 
One more thing for record keeping that you have to keep is testing. According to Washington State, you do have to ensure that your child is tested once a year. You can go to the State Board of Education website, which is www.sbe.wa.gov. And on that website, you can find a list of approved tests by our state. We use Homeschool Boss, I love it. I will be doing a review for that later this year. But there are a whole list of tests that you can have your student take in order to meet that standard. These tests do not have to be turned into anyone. They don't have to score a certain number. You simply have to make sure they take the tests and you keep those records on file. If your child is not showing progress year after year, then you need to show within those files that you have a plan to help them progress. But again, there's no standard for what they need to score on the test. Don't teach to the test. Don't worry about your test scores. Just do what you're gonna do. Let the kids test at the end of the year. Keep that record. If there's an area where your child is consistently not progressing, then you need to have written up and put in your files a plan that you're going to put into place to help them make progress. And that plan is entirely up to you. So now that I threw that in there, I almost missed it. I think we've covered it all. Eight years of age, 180 days, intent to homeschool form, subjects required to cover, testing, and the four ways that you can be qualified to homeschool. If you have any questions about homeschooling in Washington State, again, check out HSLDA or the WHO, homes, or Washington Homeschool Organization, or feel free to email me or put a comment in the box below. I'll answer the questions to the best of my ability. This is the information I have from those programs, the information I have used over the years, and I am not giving this to you as an attorney, but just as another homeschool mom, trying to simplify the process for you so it is a feeling a little less overwhelming because I know when you first start, things can feel a little, ah, and I don't want that for you or for your kids. Homeschooling should be fun. It should be a joy for you and your children. And so I am here to try and help you uh, raise independent, free-thinking, lifelong learners and to do so in a joyful, pleasant way. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, check us out on Instagram at homeschool happy hour, and I will catch you next time.